I don't understand how you new niggas work. Maybe I'm out of touch with the rules of today's society. I'm clear on all that. But let me paint who I am before I allow another nigga to do it. I am proud of what an alligator. I don't talk about a whale. When I was a casual, I thought as a casual, I spoke like a casual, and I looked at boxing like a casual. But when I became a hardcore, I put away all those casual things. This is Michael Rogers, and welcome to Bodywork Boxing. Welcome back. It's Michael Rogers. Welcome to Bodywork Boxing. I got a quick question. Everybody listening, man. Very, very, very uh, trivial question. Is Devin is that no bud? Hmm. What do you mean, Mike? Is Devin Haney the new Terrence Bud Crawford? It's a simple question. Oh man, what you talking about, man? Listen. Listen. There are a lot of similarities between Devin and Bud. The biggest one are their fans. Man, their fans will lie. Their fans will clout chase. Their fans will clickbait. Their fans will troll. Their fans abandon all rationale and reason. So in one minute, what you do inside the ring don't matter. It's all about the money. And then when you talk about the money, the money don't matter. It's all about what you do inside the ring. Then it ain't what you do inside the ring. It's all the fact that you got the belts and this and this and this. But I just see a lot of similarities between Devin Haney and Bud. And here lately, you know, I actually took my hat off to Devin Haney because he showed me something against George Cambosa that I had never saw. I never saw in the ring. But this is the first time against George Cambosa that he kind of was like, you know what? Maybe Devin is a little special. You know, I know he's not, you know, the ultimate product. It's not all polished or whatever. He still got some growing and mentally, you know, I think around 25, 26 is when your brain stopped developing. So... Physically, he's coming, you know, everything is coming to a combination and mentally is coming to a combination. So I think that we got some very great uh, opportunities to see Devin Haney in the future as those two things evolve into him being a complete grown man. Because I, I keep hearing all this, he's still young and he's still young and he's still, I'm like, man, these talking points are getting old and soggy and stale, man. You know what I'm saying? Pour me some new cereal or something, man. Put something else in the bowl, man, with these talking points. But anyways, the first thing is they got undisputed at a lower weight class. A weight class lower than what they should be fighting at. Uh, uh, yeah, you can say I'm a hater, but that's true. Bud said he would starve himself for two days. Devin's been on record for the last two years talking about how hard it's been for him to make weight. Yes, the last two years. I got videos where Devin was saying, you know, it's getting harder to make weight. It's been two years. But he stuck through it and he got that belt. They also got belts from Australians. Hmm. But Bud, Bud, Bud got his from Jeff Horn, but he, he didn't do it over there in Australia like Devin. But they both got belts from Australians. Devin's happened to be for Undisputed where he had one fight to collect all the belts. Let's, let's make a little note of that. Let's make a note. He had one fight to collect all the belts. 
right? But he didn't do that. That was his first fight at 47 when he fought Jeff Horn. Horn right? But the fans will have you walking around basically shitting on the best boxers in those perceived weight classes in favor of these two guys. And I draw a lot of parallels between Bud fans and Devin Haney fans. Why? Because a lot of them share they, they share each other. They're one and the same. They, they abandon all reasoning and all logic when it comes to supporting their fighters. And, it, you know, it's a little frustrating. I'm not going to lie to you. But I'll give you an example. And I'm not going to put a pronoun on this one. Because that's that's perceived as hate now. So, so as a content creator, you can call out, you can say anything you fucking want about these boxes. But the minute somebody point out your shit, then you wrong for not coming to somebody and addressing them. And what I will do is I'll go to your page and I'll voice what I want to say at the bottom of the page and then I'll say whatever I want to say in my video. Because I don't got time to be getting disrespected, getting put on mute, you know what I'm saying, getting called all kind of names, you know, all this, whatever, when, you know, I'm trying to talk boxing responsibly. A lot of people can't do it. A lot of people can't do that. But let me give you an example. Here recently, and I was like, man, this was a good show. Like, up until I heard certain things, that's why you kind of got to be careful when you click on certain things and you watch it and you, when you're so quick to hit the like button or whatever. I want you to hit my like button, but <laughs> go ahead and hit my like button right now. But here recently, yesterday, I heard a video in which, you know, it was a team of people, they had somebody come on. And they painting this narrative. And they got a lot of people watching. I mean, I think I think it's like 20,000 people watching. Or subscribe. That'd be like 2,000 people, you know, on a regular watching these kind of videos. And this is how, these are the people that I have to deal with coming on to my videos. And talking about stuff that they really don't even know what the fuck they talking about. But I heard yesterday and this point gets echoed all the time now that Devin Haney has the belts all of a sudden they don't matter newsflash when Devin Haney got that belt that Lomachenko dropped when he got elevated that belt didn't matter back then it didn't matter and so one of my guys, Tank, is getting a bad rap. They say, oh, man, now, now, man, Tank, and they keep replaying the same, you know what I'm saying, soggy-ass clip and a uh, whole other things that they misuse when they use it. They, they do that, too. They'll misuse a quote quick. You know, they'll infer or they'll omit or whatever, which is just like lying. If you want to tell the whole story, you got to tell the whole story because omission is just a part of a lie. And then you can say, oh, no, well, yeah, okay, well, maybe I... But people will let you run with it because it's like church. And every day when you actually, you hold church and you have your congregation in there and everybody's sitting in their offering and you say, you know, how good God is and this and this and this. So that's when you're praising the fighter. That's when they say, oh, amen. And they send in their super chats and super chats and super chats and amen. But every day... They got to find a new devil to pin the tail on the donkey with. And so for the last two, three weeks, it's been Tank. They've been pinning the tail on the donkey. And Tank has been the devil that they've been pinning the tail on in their congregation and just eating on every day. They eat and they get likes, clicks, views, subscriptions. They just influencing thousands and thousands of people with this bullshit. But I digress. But they basically said that Tank said... All of a sudden that Devin got the belts. The belts don't matter. News flash. When they asked Tank about George Cambosis in a fight before the Devin Haney and George Cambosis fight was made. This is right after Tank beat Cruz. I saw Cruz. He said, oh yeah, he said, I'll beat his ass. But he can keep those belts though. 
Those belts spin didn't matter. Stop trying to paint a narrative to cater to your favorite fighter. And y'all do this all the time. It's just like when Devin Haney was with the zone and all those moves. So so now, because in present time, that's why I be I, my new name is back in shorty. That's why I get my likes, clicks, and views on the back end. Because in real time, I sound like a hater. But on the back end, when you realize I'm, I was telling the truth or I was on to something, then you start saying, well, dang, what else was he telling the truth about? So then you start digging through the archives. And if I put a pronoun on it, I can get thousands and thousands more views. It's already been proved. I'm not going to do that. That's sloppy. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to, I don't want none of the credit for the content and the things that I put out to, to actually get mistaken for clout chasing. And dragging people's names through the mud. That's not what I'm going to do. But. When it comes to Devin Haney. When he was with the zone. He was not fighting the best competition. Eddie Hearn does not cater to black American boxers. He really don't even cater to American boxing. He caters to his European audience in which he gets marquee guys and names and sign them, i.e. Andre, i.e. Canelo, i.e. Devin. And then he'll match them up with people that have no business in the ring with them. No business in the ring with them. And then he'll time it and put his European fighters up on their undercard and then he have his big shows where he make all his bread across seas where he's from, where he rules and reigns. And that's how he makes his, his money. But the whole time Devin was on there, it was even a record with this I'm a boss, I'm a boss talk. It was even a record of Bill Haney, the first time in the Gary Russell negotiations, the very first time. Not the not the time that went public and went nasty and they tried to paint Gary, Gary Russell like a duck. Not that time, the first time. When Gary Russell and Bill was talking and Gary Russell Jr., Mr. Gary Russell Jr., called Bill out and said, hey, man, we had something on the table. We were negotiating. I didn't hear back from you. And Bill Haney jumps in and says, you know what? Eddie didn't, Eddie didn't like the numbers. And Mr. Gary Russell said, well, Bill, you could have told me that. He was like, I know, I know, but we be talking now, baby. And this is when they already had, they already had Gamboa in the pocket. They already had him in the pocket because you got to book a venue and you got to know who you're facing. They had already had him in the pocket. And Mr. Gary Russell Jr. won the fight in December. But they were like, nah, we got this November date locked in. Take this three fight deal. And Gary Russell said, no, I want to one off. I want to hit and run. I want to grab and dash. And the fight didn't happen. And they ran with it. For four or five months, they ran with this whole thing about Gary Russell ducking. Only to come around and tell you Oh man, man, hey, Devin Haney, man, he took pe peanuts to go over there and fight Cambosis. He put all them people over there in them stands over there in Australia. He took, man, he took a slave contract to go fight for Bob, and he could have just continued to do what he was doing. Man, Eddie said he would have gave him more money to fight Lee Selby. He could afford to leave Selby for way more money. He didn't have to do that. He wants to be great. No, no. Yes, I'm not taking away from the fact that Devin wants to be great. Definitely not taking away from the fact that Devin wants to be great. Because he has a desire. I'm just saying that the energy changes. The energy changes. Because nobody was saying anything about Everybody was all on Devin Haney when he was over there on his own. Oh man, he the best, he this, this, this. We couldn't prove his numbers back then, but he was a boss. But you got Bill on record saying Eddie didn't like the numbers. So that means you got to check in. You know what I'm saying? You got to tap that purse. You got to tap that wallet. And you got to ask, hey, can I get a dollar for this candy bar? And Big Daddy got to say yes or no. And open up the wallet. Or Big Mama got to open up the purse. That's what was going on. All that was fine. But see, when you talk about another fighter, Eddie Hearn, oh, man, that's different. When you talk about a, a, a Anthony Joshua or something like that, oh, man, Eddie, man, he ain't this and he ain't that. And when it came to uh, Wilder and Joshua, you know, the goalposts just get moved. But we let him do all that when he was over on the zone. That's just like that's just like Bud. We let Bud, with all them shenanigans, do all that stuff over there on top rank. Knowing he wasn't with the right people to fight the 47-pounders 
that he needed to fight, that everybody was fighting, the Thurmans, you know, the Danny Garcias, uh, you know, all those fights, the people that, the, the 47s, the up and comers, the established people, anybody at 47, we didn't, I mean, because we were saying it was a, it was a, a, a block in the road, and it was a promotional block in the road, and the fact that he was attached to top rank. Okay, so the same thing happened was with Devin Haney. They were saying it was a block in the road, it was a promotional thing. Oh, he's on the zone, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Oh man, Eddie, you know, Devin to fight anybody. So then when he left, that's when they started roasting Eddie. So now, Bob and Bud's business relationship ends, right? A couple months later, Devin goes over there to ESPN. And he's fighting with Top Rank. So ESPN is running Top Rank. Bob and them is in control of Top Rank. He has a fighter. He has a new crop of Olympians. He has fresh blood. He's known to be able to build stars. That's what he named for. So that's the starter pack. So in, in all actuality, Devin Haney just got with the legit starter pack. Eureka! He just got with the starter pack. Look what the starter pack did. The starter pack got him undisputed. See, Eddie and them got him all the money. He, they got him more money than what his market value probably was. What his worth is, I'm not going to say that because Devin Haney only knows his worth. And he got what he negotiated. So I salute him for that. He was making that bread. You know what I'm saying? I don't blame you. Hey, you going to cut me a check? I'm taking that check. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't see why people not going to take you know what I'm saying? Because he's getting paid. You putting butts in the seats, he's getting that back end pay per view money plus his little guarantee up front. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know him. He can walk around and everybody knows who he is on sight and by name. I don't blame him. But now that Devin is on ESPN, everything he's doing is legitimized. I'm like, dang. So Eddie and Bob. Are like lepers who can change their spots, huh? So all of a sudden, so all of a sudden, contracts don't matter. So now all of a sudden, the same ducking shit that his fans started, where everybody's ducking him, then went over here and then transferred over to Top Rank, where you're under contract with ESPN and Top Rank with a fight on deck. And I heard, a, I heard a date. I heard somebody said October, like the middle of October with this rematch but we know it's a rematch but you gotta fight on deck and take his duck hmm. that's crazy because I remember going into the Cambosis fight when everybody was spectating and Mr. Gary Russell Jr. was robbed by Mark Mark Say I'm not gonna say robbed I'm gonna say pickpocketed when Mr. Gary Russell was pickpocketed by Mark Magnifico Maxeo. Devin Haney chimes in and says, oh man, you got beat by a, funk, a bum. Right? So, Gary Antoine, the little brother, fighting at 140, say, oh, okay, if he got beat by a bum, then I'm going to see about you when you come up to 140. It was all this up for, oh man, oh man, don't he know he got to fight? It would have to be for a belt. And what does he have to offer? And all this nonsense. I'm like, oh, wow. 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 The energy just changed. And then all these content creators say, oh, this is what they, this is what they talking point was. <laughs> this is a checkmate, y'all. This is a checkmate. This is a checkmate. All right. The talking point was, oh, man, why, why Gary Antoine Russell so mad? Why? He was like, oh, oh, because Devin called, uh, Devin called him and said that he got beat by a bum. Oh, don't blame Devin. Don't blame Devin. Gary called him a bum. So, so now, oh, okay, so if a fighter calls another fighter a bum, it's okay. So, because Gary Russell Jr. called Mark Maceo a bum. Now it's like Devin was justified in saying, ah, ha, ha, you got beat by a bum. 
But it wasn't no energy to go up there and see Gary Antoine. It was all this pushback, yo. Well, they would have to fight Gary Antoine if he had a belt or if he was in a position or if he was packed, if he was basically making himself a household name or if the value was there. Right? That's that's what the storyline was. That's what one you know infamous content creator, that's what his stance was. Oh man, don't get mad at me. Cause Gary called him a bum. Devin just echoed what he said. Okay, so let's fast forward. The whole camp was saying that George Cambosis was a bum. That's all you heard was bum 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 bum. I gave George Cambosis more credit than they gave him. Bum 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 bum. Bidi bum bum. That's all they kept saying. So after he go over to Australia to be the bum. Under Bob for peanuts with a rematch and another fight. Now all of a sudden he the greatest thing since sliced bread. Mind you, the run that Bud had when he was down there and he got his straps at 140, and he didn't go through the gauntlet. It, it wasn't murderer's row. And newsflash. The first time when he moved up and he went to 47, the very first fight was with the least respected champion at the time in Jeff Horn. So at some point in time, we just got to be real, man. Um, you know, what needs to be really, what need, really needs to be said is that just like Bud, Bud had to use Spence's name. Bud attached himself to Spence for years and years and years and let Spence do all that heavy lifting and running. And that's how he actually built. He built himself off of being Errol Spence's nemesis. And now it's been 136 days. The time when I made this video in which we haven't heard anything from Bud after the call out. Now, Tank is supposed to be bum bashing and he, even though he's went through multiple weight classes, he beat more champions. This was the first time Devin beat a champion. Now he the best thing since sliced bread. And he's the best at 135. Wrong. Wrong. You can have your opinion. You can have your opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Now how rational that opinion is, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I guess. But all of a sudden, contracts don't matter. Contracts don't matter when it comes to Devin Haney, even though he signed with Bob and he's on the top ring. Now money don't matter. Oh man, I was taking peanuts when Devin was talking that A side shit because of a high guarantee up front. I, I can literally say for years now. When he was with Eddie, that's what they were talking. Oh man, Eddie, oh, truth be told, he make more money than Tank. They going online looking up. You know, net worth values and comparing and all this is like, long story short, Devin can't be built without using Tank name. They were using Shakur name and he ain't even at 35 yet. But he can't be built without using without using Tank's name, without using Shakur's name, without using Ryan's name. And it looked like a situation where we dealing with Bud all over again under Bob. Bob will come out and say, we want, to, we want him to fight these fighters. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Yes. 
sempre faz, né? Eu falei que eu gostava também, quando faz, eu pego a cena de fogo. Eu não sei o que é o que eu faço. Eu não sei o que é o que eu faço.